is everyone doing? I hope you are all doing well and having an excellent week so far. It is so good to see you again, even if it is just through a screen. Okay, today's game is going to be red light, green light. So when we see the green light, we need to do the action. And when we see the red light, we need to stop. And you're going to do the actions for me today. Because my helper is going to tell us when to stop and go. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay, do I have a green light or red light? Oh, jumping. Okay, we're jumping first. did move a little bit. Okay, what next action should we do? Are we going to tap our head or tap our knees? Tap your head and rub your belly. Okay, tap and her. Tap on one foot. Tap our heads and rub our belly and jump on one foot. Okay, ready? Do I have a green light or? Okay. Wait for my green light. Oh, I froze. I'm frozen now. Did I get to go again? Oh, she's silly, isn't she? Oh, thank you, my helper. Today, Pastor Mike is talking about Psalm 23, 3b. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. To go along with that, our story is going to be found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 15, about a man named Naaman. He was a captain in the Syrian army where he lived. But even though he was really, really important, he was pretty sad. Do you see all these white dots all over him? Nam had leprosy. You did not want to get leprosy because it was contagious and nobody wanted to be around you. And so that was a pretty sad thing for Nam. One day, the servant girl said to her mistress, I really wish that Nam man would go back to see the prophet in Samaria because then he could be healed from his leprosy. Well, Naaman must have told, or must have believed what his wife told him because he went to see the king. And the king, he must have agreed this was a good idea because he gave Naaman lots of money and a letter to give to the king in Israel saying, hey, please heal this guy. He's very important to us. Well, when the king in Israel got this letter, he was like, oh no, what am I going to do? I'm not God. I can't heal him. But, thank you. Elisha, who was a prophet in Israel, heard about this and he told the king, you know what king? Send him over to me and I will talk to him. Well, so Nathan, he got into his chariot. With his helper. And they went over to see Elisha. But when they got there, Elisha didn't even come out to see him, but he sent one of his servants out to talk to Naaman. And he told him, Go and wash, go dip yourself seven times into the Jordan River, and then you will be healed of your leprosy. Well, Naaman, he did not like this. First of all, he was angry because Elisha didn't even come out and talk to him in person. And then second, he has to go wash himself in the Jordan River, that little insignificant river with that comb, 
He thought their rivers were so much more important. Oh, he did not like that. But his servant was a lot smarter. And he told Naaman, look, if Elisha had told you to do something really, really important, you would have done that. So why don't we go down to the river, wash yourself seven times, let's see what happens. Okay, so down they went to the river. Okay. And Naaman started to wash himself. He went one, two, three, four, five, still not good, six, seven times into the river. But when he came up that seventh time, he was cleaned. There was absolutely no more spots on him. His skin looked just like a little baby's skin. It was so soft and healed. And after that, Naaman, he went back to see Elisha. And he told Elisha that, now I know your God is the only true God who can save. And he gave praise and glory to God. And he wanted to give Elisha some thank you presents. And Elisha said, no because that's not the purpose. God uses people in ways that you would never expect to bring glory and honor to him. And Naaman, he had to humble himself. And he got healed through some unlikely events, first listening to a servant girl who told his wife what he should do. And then he went and ended up seeing Elisha and then dipping himself into the Jordan River, which wasn't a very important river, but it was what God had him do. And God doesn't need to do anything big and fancy for his ways to work. God can work anytime, anywhere, with anyone to bring glory to himself so that others might come to know and love God too. We need to be willing to let God lead us in the paths he has set out for us in order to bring glory and honor to him. We don't know what the big picture is, but God does. We're going to end off with three songs. Our first one is Trust and Obey. We've got Trust and Obey. Ready? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Good singing, you guys. Okay, our next one is a new one called I Reach Up High. You ready? We're gonna do some actions with it. I reach up high and touch the ground. I stomp my feet and turn around. I've got to woohoo, praise the Lord. I jump and dance with all my might. I might look funny, but that's all right. I've got to woohoo, praise the Lord. Once more, ready? I reach up high and I touch the ground. I stomp my feet and I turn around. I've got to woohoo, praise the Lord. I jump and dance with all my might. I might look funny, but that's all right. I've got to woohoo, praise my Lord. The last one is, my God is so big. Ready? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. 
The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you and you and you and you and you and you. I'll see you all this way next week. I hope you have a fantastic week ahead. Bye.